Well, hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You are listening to episode number 266. I'm Victoria Gallagher, Law of Attraction hypnotist and number one bestselling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. And I'm also the founder of HipTalk.com and HypnoCloud app apps, which gives you access to over 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the app stores. And today I have a very special guest with me, and I just made a big faux pas. I didn't actually ask for the pronunciation before we got started here, but I'm going to just take a shot at it. It's Chris Sirak. Sirak? That's that's correct. There's there's no right or wrong ultimately. So uh, <laughs> yes, Sirak is perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Chris Sirak is an author, a speaker, a meditator. He is passionate about turning sophisticated topics into accessible, meaningful, and inspiring experiences with an extensive background in design, psychology, and tech. Quite a varied background there. Um, he breaks yeah. down traditional teachings to make ancient wisdom accessible and deliverable by modern audiences and his b u b like b e like be yourself b u mindfulness program helps you to gain transformative insights by following a simple step by step approach to reacting less and thriving more. In private, Chris enjoys spending time in nature, as you can clearly see if you're watching this on uh, the YouTube, <laughs> uh, or you'll get to see when it switches over to him, um, playing tennis, writing music, and he resides in beautiful Bali, Indonesia. And you can find out more about him at Sirak.com and on his social media at Chris Sirak. And he can uh, be found at Zurich.com forward slash B dash U dash book and all the other great links. We'll have those in the show notes. And so today Chris is going to be talking about, are you ready to be you? And so are you ready to be you guys? <laughs> Let's hear it for <laughs> Chris Sirak. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hello, Victoria. Thank you so much for having me on. It's such a great pleasure already. Already it is. Yes, we've already hit yes. it off. We've already been talking about this uh, amazing background. If you guys are um, not watching this on YouTube, this you, you, you should experience Bali in the background here um, with this zero, uh, what do you call it? Zero, you know, pool infinity, pool. Mm -hmm. infinity pool, infinity <laughs> pool in the background with all these beautiful palm trees all around. It is just a, this is like, he, he actually, if I had an award for the best background, he gets it. And it's real. This isn't like green screen. This is like real, like the water in the pool is like moving. It's really, really cool. And <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're we're not here to talk about the pool. We're talking about being you and all the wonderful benefits that come along when you do that. So, tell us just a little bit about your background, a little bit more about your story. How did you get here? Yeah, well, you know, noticing the details and the beauty of little things like the pool actually is being present, and that's how we uh, reveal how life reveals uh, ourselves to ourselves some more but we'll get to that <laughs> so a little bit uh, about my background um i don't think i you know did anything differently in fact um uh i probably just followed you know the steps that society says we should take to to really uh, to to become happy ultimately and um and uh like you said in the intro i i worked in as a design consultant for many years a tech startup entrepreneur um and uh and taught at higher education so throughout all those years i you know uh, created a what would look like on paper a very uh successful uh resume and and uh, a lot of work life balance and still something was missing and um uh you know that permanent happiness that we seek in these outcomes never really arrives right and and so we're 
we may achieve something and life happens, you know, in such a way anyway, that often we don't even achieve the things we set out to do. It takes us down different roads, but when we do, even then it's just a, a temporary type of happiness. So I just, as a seeker, uh, I thought to myself, there has to be more. So, um, I went seeking and that's really how I, I, you know, how I started turning inward because uh, seeking ourselves on the outside ultimately, and that's the secret design of life, as I call it, it then eventually turns us inward. Uh, the infatuation with the external, uh, which is supposed to happen because here we are suddenly finding ourselves in our bodies and in this incredible 3D environment with our senses. We should be fully engaged in that. And then, but eventually the lesson comes that uh, that is just kind of a, and the nature of life is ever changing, ever evolving. Nothing stands still, and so to find our permanent self in that is a, a losing proposition. So um, ultimately, uh, learning to to connect to the deeper self um, and then experience life through that, uh, through the deeper essence, um, is where I did start finding more permanent self and permanent happiness. Great, that is wonderful. Um, you know, I. I think it's so important for people to like, just, you know, embrace that present moment and learn how, I mean, it, it's all right here. It's, it's, it's just all right here right now. And it's available up to, to everyone, but you know, life gets in the way, um, you know, challenges get in the way people, uh, let the, you know, let themselves become obsessed with some of these, these challenges. So how do you work? how do you suggest people work through those everyday challenges that, you know, that yeah. they face that take us out of that present? Yeah. Well, th everything is in front of us, just like you say, and, and we come along and we, we have these conditioned expectations and uh, these beliefs, I call it a truth structure. And so from this vastness of everything that exists, all the possibilities are always there we start to limit ourselves through our belief system. And, and suddenly, you know, a couple hundred, maybe a few thousand beliefs out of everything that exists, that's a small, tiny sliver. And then we try to find ourselves through that. It's, it's just a hard way to go, right? So really opening ourselves up to allowing everything to be as it is, to see things as they are. Um, then we really open up the scope and then, but just because we can be anyone, we have to do, we have to be open to being anyone, but then from that, um, uh, our path emerges of who we're supposed to be, which is our inner blueprint, our true self. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, there, there are so millions and millions of different things happening around us at all times, but, you know, we're just so zoned in on, you know, just the dozen things that we're focused on. And so it kind of seems very limited. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, living life through the mental lens and we're all kind of conditioned to do that where the world around us is constantly looking to elicit a reaction from us, true or false, right or wrong, agree with, disagree with. And so all this keeps us lodged in our head and in, in a state of judgment. And it's this judging that uh, keeps us feeling separate and small. Every, every time we label or define or judge something, good or bad, mm -hmm. uh, it creates a, a sense of separateness, right? So there's oh, me over here and then the thing, or the person, place, or thing, that I judge is over there. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a, an act of distance, right? Separateness. And, and we do this all day long when we're always living life through that mental lens, always validating our, our existing beliefs and, and uh, labeling things, you know, defining things. We can't look at a tree without, you know, calling it a tree. Um, and, and ultimately what that is, is a mental image, a snapshot of what a tree is, as opposed to actually just experiencing it. So, um, that experiencing pulls us in closer again, it gets rid of the separateness. It, it, it reveals our true connection, our true nature to, to everything, right? We are all one ultimately. And, uh, so that is really the recommendation is to, seek ourselves in the little things. Um, I often get asked, like, how do you deal with these, these big challenges? But it's ultimately, um, life is very simple, as you said a moment ago, in the present moment, right? Mm -hmm. So when you break things down, uh, everything is very manageable, very simple. Um, I remember a, a situation with my mom 
had had triple bypass. She's in her 80s and she lives in Europe and was afraid to come visit me in, in Florida after that experience. It was just a, an overwhelming thought to go on such a big, long trip. And so what we did was we just broke it down for her, you know, focus on not the big kind of overwhelming thought, uh, but rather break it down to a point where it doesn't feel overwhelming, smaller steps. So you're folding your clothes, you're putting your clothes in your suitcase, you're carrying the suitcase to the stairs, you're in a car, you're driving. So, and suddenly she was able to do it. And it's all just really taking what feels overwhelming. And you can do this with anything in life. Um, cause it's often this big pictures, big projection, these expectations that, uh, you know, they, they strangle us, they, they, they paralyze us and we never get going. Uh, but if we scale it down to what, what's a, a reasonable, uh, easy feeling step, and then just stay there, take that step and then take the next easy step. So, uh, it's, it's really just, uh, you know, the, Taking it easy, life is supposed to be flowing and easy and light and fun. And if we ever feel ourselves trying too hard, and I do this all the time still where I find myself pushing too hard, wanting too hard for a while. And then, and then I kind of wake up to that and I go, oh, I just got to you know surrender, relax. And then suddenly things happen with ease. It is so true. And when you're talking about your mom taking or ch chunking down something kind of, you know, that we would perceive as hard and scary to do, or, you know, um, for me, that was uh, many years ago when I had to have surgery and, you know, it's like, it's the most frightening thing in the world, but I just, you know, I just, in that moment, it's like, okay, all I'm doing, and I literally walked myself through, it's like, all I'm doing is talking to a doctor. All I'm doing is laying on this thing that's rolling down. The, all I'm doing is, you know, and I just focus so intently on these little chunks of time where I was able to like, oh, before you knew it, I woke up and it's like, all I'm doing is <laughs> waking up and this is over. And, you know, then you have to deal with the, the pain management, but, you know, you know, just kind of keeping that moment by moment by moment, because you can't be over there. You're not there yet, you know, and nothing is happening. Yeah. <laughs> All that's happening right now is I'm breathing. <laughs> Exactly. And that moment by moment is the only thing that's real. There's everything else is just not being present. So being lost in thoughts um, is not really being here is not really being alive and living and responding to what's in front of us. Uh, and, and usually we're when we're lost in thoughts, we're just, you know, the monkey mind of past and future. And um, it it it's not real. And, and that's where most of our, if not all of our anxiety and fear and trepidation lies is when when we're lost in thought and we spend a lot of time lost in thought every day. So coming out of that, you know, even just five percent <laughs> will already make a big difference. Exactly. So just taking all those everyday challenges or the, even the big challenges and just using those as, as an opportunity to get present and get back here and go, you know, and go within. Yeah. And, and life actually delivers us clues, if not, you know, direct orders <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um, in that the things we feel triggered by, the things that are challenges are actually pointing to something inside of us that is feeling triggered. It, if there was nothing there, if there wasn't some unhealed uh, aspect of ourselves that was reacting, then it, the situation would just pass us by. And a person standing next to us who has a, a different internal makeup wouldn't even react to, to the same situation. So it really, life is our teacher, our ultimate teacher, and always telling us, showing us the next thing we need to work on so that we can expand and become fuller and and whole and, and release those layers of woundedness and trauma and stuck feelings and and so that we can feel better again and and complete and really embrace our purpose so life really wants us to be uh you know our best self yeah this is so rich this is really um there's so so much depth to to this and so you say in um you know in your book you talk about our ultimate purpose is uh, to be the person that we're designed to be. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, there's, there's so many layers to that. Our ultimate purpose, 
um, the person that we're designed to be. So we're yeah. designed to be a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we all have that experience of that inner voice that kind of whispers. It's a subtle voice, but it's kind of always there. And even if we go uh, against it, and, and sometimes we live, uh, you know, against it for for decades, but there's always this sense you can call it intuition or gut or inner divinity, higher self, heart, whatever you want to call it. It's it's something inside of us telling us that a situation resonates. Um, or it doesn't. And it's just really learning to uh, calm the noise of the mind, which is the, the main source of, of noisiness. And, um, and, and the mind really is a, a tool designed to know things and organize things and plan things. And for that, it's great, right? The power of the mind, but it doesn't know us. So we should be using it and not letting it control us. Uh, and our true wisdom really comes from within. So uh, through a mindfulness practice coming out of the that noisy headspace and and grounding ourselves in our body every day and and bringing that grounded essence to each situation so that we can really feel what's right for us and what what isn't and by following you know that which resonates the the bigger picture reveals itself you know some people are hesitant to say well I'm, that just means we're floating aimlessly no not at all uh, it, it means that the, as we are true to ourselves every step of the way, this this path um, starts to reveal itself and the bigger picture of who we're meant to be shows itself. And there really is a blueprint, a unique blueprint inside each and every one of us that, that that's what's resonating, right? That blueprint is what's responding. And so we start out on this journey and, and some people have... Um, uh, hesitation because it feels, you know, selfish or they have guilt around, you know, self-development and focusing on oneself so much, but we have to heal ourselves before we can heal the world. We have to love ourselves before we can really love others. We have to be able to listen to ourselves, listen to that inner voice before we can really listen to others and hold space for them. So it does begin with, uh, you know, the world being the, life being the teacher and showing us where we need to grow and expand. And then from that uh, self-expansion, ultimately our focus again starts to turn outward because then we become of service. The challenges that we have, oddly enough, the things we resist the most become our calling because we become experts at overcoming those things. And then we can help others to do the same. Yeah. So normally it, so it seems like, um, we come here to, um, ultimately, um, you know, learn from our experiences that we've had or challenges and then heal the wounds that are as a result of those challenges that we've had to overcome. And then after we've overcome and healed those things, then now we're in a place to be the teacher and help other people to overcome. Those yeah, things. exactly. It's, and it's funny how life works. At first, we we, we become so obsessed with the ex external, right? All these these things and the stuff and the the senses and uh, and we should because it's those experiences that uh, as we said earlier uh, the the fleeting the changing nature of it starts to uh, reveal the changing nature of ourselves and so that really focuses on ourselves and and allowing ourselves to grow and flow and 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 work on ourselves and and then and then once we've kind of done that work then we start to open up and turn outward again so that we can be of service to the world. Yeah. What do you think some of the things are that get in the way for people who, you know, like probably deep down inside, they know that that's what they're meant to do, but maybe they just, you know, they, they don't feel good enough or healed enough, or they ha don't have enough time, or they have so many distractions or whatever. Like what are, you know, what, what gets, what, what gets in the way and like, how can people, overcome okay. that yeah well it's our reactivity uh at all stages um you know i don't know if it's possible to fully come out of it but we are conditioned to mentally react to everything and these are uh, uh physiological nervous endings that form in our brain that that are constantly inflamed and, and reignited by our our environment 
And so that keeps us in our head, in that noise, in a comparative state, in what are others doing, uh, listening to outside voices, the media, and this constant barrage, and it just drowns out our inner truth. And um, so the task really is to come out of reactivity. And I think most people reach that um, knowledge, that knowing of like, why do I keep reacting to things? I, it's wasting my energy and my time. And it's even the little things like right, running out of toothpaste or getting cut off in traffic or things like that. And we linger on these small things and, and, and let that reactivity carry over into the next moment and influence how we feel in the next moment. And so this uh, this natural flow of life uh, gets lost on us because we're always reacting still to the last situation. And so uh, knowing that is is the first big step of recognizing that like I need to come out, do something about this um, reactivity. And then the next step is really a, an actual practice, um, awareness, being aware of our our thoughts and being aware of our feelings as they show up as sensations in our body. And awareness is really a, like a muscle, like any other muscle. You go to the gym, you need to practice and, and develop it and strengthen it and, and nurture and keep it maintained and in good shape. So a mindfulness practice through uh, breath work and meditation, nature walks, grounding yourself in the morning, just these little routines uh, can have a big impact on maintaining that connection, that groundedness. And, and that then starts to bring us out of that reactivity and and we linger less, you know, it's not a, a switch that flips from, from reactive to non-reactive, but, you know, as we mentioned before, 5%, 10% is already a huge improvement. Every second that we're not in reactivity, that we're less lost in thought translates into more presence and, and more life ultimately. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, um, you know, as a, long, long, long time meditator now. I mean, for many, many, many years, I, you know, I have less and less reactivity. I mean, I'm a human being. I, if, if you talked to me yesterday when I was dealing with the phone company, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the I, phone company or the bank that still gets me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when you get caught in one of those, you know, those loops where you just, you can't seem to get to the person. So I was a little reactive then. However, for the most part, like the, the typical things that you would react to, um, you know, I don't react to those. And, and sometimes people, you know, they, it, like you seem so stoic, you know, it's like, don't you care? And it's not that you don't care. It's just that it doesn't, you know, there's, there's no sense in it. You know, there's no reason to react because you actually have far more power at far more access to resources than, you know, if, if you're in a non-react mode, you know, and you're just going to go, you know, you're just going to get a whole lot more accomplished in your life. Yeah. I remember driving down La Cienega in Los Angeles many years ago when I was still a, a consultant and I had taken on a, a bunch of work. I just said yes, because it kind of came in waves. And so I said yes to a few projects, too many. So I thought, and I was starting to feel really overwhelmed in anticipating the next meeting and the next call. And, um, and uh, it really drove me to the edge of a, a panic attack, an anxiety attack. Mm. And I remember sitting there in my car and just suddenly I uh, surrendered and let go of the need to control practically just so I wouldn't go into an anxiety attack. But that was a, a pivotal moment for me where I realized uh, I was causing myself a lot of the stress and and the, the weight on me uh, just kind of it left me. And suddenly, uh, you know, what was it? Six, seven projects that seemed overwhelming. Suddenly I had all this extra capacity that could take on six or seven more. So yeah, if we just trust ourselves to respond to the situation when it arrives, as opposed to trying to control and steer and anticipate every possible permutation of what could happen, what somebody might say, then a lot of more resources uh, open up and we realize just how powerful we are. Yeah. So aside from, you know, just, uh, just the benefits that you've mentioned so far about um, being non-reactive. Um, like what are some of the surprising benefits of, you know, really getting to know yourself and going within, like, what are, what are some things that people might not 
necessarily be going for as a goal, but that they realize as a result of doing this, that there's yeah. all these other benefits, the benefits oh my of gosh. the benefits. The benefits of living the way we're supposed to. I mean, it starts with, uh, you know, these benefits are big and small. The, the big might be just life is magical. Um, every moment when when it arrives is the unknown. And when we no longer try to control and inject ourselves and project what we think should be happening and just allow things to happen, uh, we just start to flow with this greater current uh, as opposed to trying to uh, anticipate and live our life ahead of uh, actually living it, right? In, in our minds, we try to plan everything out. Our whole life, we try to plan out in our heads. And then when <laughs> it goes differently, we get upset and we wonder why. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny, right? And then after things happen, and we're still upset that they didn't happen the way they happened, even though it's already happened, right? So we then try to change what's already done with. And it's this very inverse way Um an unhealthy way, ultimately, uh, of living. So uh, just starting to connect with the uh, the comfort of allowing life to unfold and, and trusting it. Uh, so this deep trust starts to emerge that you can't create that uh, it, from, from the mind. That's just kind of a, a mind is a control freak. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it likes to inject the, the known, even if it's just pure conjecture, into the unknown, which is your future, which is the, the whole story, the hero's journey that wants to unfold. And we interfere with that. And we're in resistance to that because uh, we want it our way. <laughs> mm -hmm. So really allowing your path to unfold and life to show yourself to yourself. Um, life is a big mirror and, and there's, a, there's an incredible learning experience and adventure that starts to unfold. It's also in... And the little things like um, time starts to fade into the background. Uh, you, you're not as pressed. You're not as hurried uh, anymore. And there's this overarching kind of urgency to everything that falls away as well, because, you know, time is still necessary for this dimension as a, as a planning tool, but you're not driven by it any longer and so that is feels good and relaxing and and, and then the super small things like um you know living in LA I remember uh, noticing how I was near the airport LAX and uh, planes would fly overhead and when I was on the phone it would drown out the conversation and I get you know upset it was stupid stupid planes <laughs> and um and then you know after a while in my mindfulness practice and meditation practice in place all I would do is pause when the plane's flying by and then resume the conversation. It's the path of least resistance. And, um, and you just continue on. Uh, so, you know, living in Indonesia, the, the traffic it, rules are very different in that there are no rules. <laughs> and, and so you just have to be that really present. That be interesting. <laughs> yeah. You have to be really present. You know, there's chickens and potholes and people and poles and just all oh kinds God. of things happening. And you can't linger on the last chicken that just crossed the path because otherwise you're not ready for the next one. And so it really keeps you present and, and that's a <laughs> good metaphor for life. It's, uh, I call it clear action. When we're out of reactivity, we can act clearly from a clear place. Uh, clear action sees what the situation needs. Uh, it, it's not uh, aggressive energy like reactive energy, but it's more um, a collaborative and, and, and inclusive energy. So when we bring that to every situation, our problem solving ability skyrockets and we just, uh, we, we find the path of least resistance so much more easily. We see it and then we move through a situation. Some might be pleasant. Some might be unpleasant. It doesn't mean not feeling your feelings any longer, um, the mindful life, but in fact, it actually means feeling your feelings as they are without amplifying them, without creating a story on top of them. Because the story I found that, um, that was really one of my big turning points is, is uh, my reaction, the story to my feelings mm -hmm. was the much bigger part of what I was dealing with than the feelings themselves. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we have a tendency to, why am I feeling like this? Sometimes the feeling seems to occur before the story. And then you make up a story to validate that, you know, but the feeling, you know, if you just allowed the feeling to be, 
than, you know, without a story, there doesn't need to be a story. <laughs> yeah, you, you just said it exactly. It's so the ability to notice the feeling before the story sets in, right? So you've created a gap there and ob observer quality, if you will, to the sensation, to the feeling in your body somewhere. This is, uh, this is the mindfulness practice I teach, the form of meditation is observing your sensations because your feelings show up in your body somewhere. And then we actually react to the feeling mm -hmm. itself. It's not the memory of things. Uh, that's That gets us lost in blame in the past and so forth. But actually just noticing where you're feeling your feelings and giving that space uh, to be. And then, and then that feeling will arise and pass. And that uh, with some practice uh, keeps us out of that reactive loop. So exactly what you say, you start to develop this gap between feeling things and then the, the noticing of the feeling interrupts the reactivity. So you, you, you don't have to go into the story any longer, or at least you notice the story. I'm, Oh, I'm getting lost in the story again. And, and you can come out of it a little sooner. And that, that's, that brings back life uh, and, and time. If you, some people say we spend 60, 70, 80% of our day lost in thought. And if you think about it, you can regain so much time in your life. Like, I don't know, double your lifetime ultimately in, in actual quality time lived uh, when we come out of that, uh, that storytelling mind. Yeah. Because it's those, the, the feeling of the experience that we remember, not so much the, the thoughts, like you can't even remember what you were thinking about yesterday. And you spent a lot of time thinking about things, but you do remember the, 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 uh, the experiences, you know, the, the visions, the, you know, the feelings that you were experiencing. I mean, it's the feelings that locks that in so if we're more in touch with that then it's it it seems reasonable that we can ex kind of stretch time uh, essentially because time is yeah. just a made up it's just a made up thing anyway right <laughs> yeah, yeah i love that stretching time and you know there's a funny side uh effect to that in that when I was starting out as a public speaker and taking classes and so forth, and I was really an introvert. And, uh, you know, one of the things that when you feel that inner voice calling, and uh, I often get the question of what's the difference between kind of like your your true purpose and then a purpose uh, that's just a fantasy made up by, you know, whatever impressions you've gotten. And and really your, your true calling is something that um, isn't necessarily easy or comfortable, uh, mm -hmm. hence you're being called to it because you're not quite ready yet, but you know, you have to put in, you know, take classes or do whatever it's required. So I used to be very introverted and, and uh, just fearful of being on stages and speaking in public and, and doing interviews like this. And, and so, um, it, it was, uh, it was when I realized that 93% of what you say is not actually retained by the audience. It's how you make them feel. And everyone walks away with how did this experience make me feel? So you're, like you say, that wisdom and that that life essence is really our our feeling state, and and that's what we remember, and that's uh, that's the, the the quality of our life. When somebody asks us how are you doing, how's your life, um, then we really reflect on how are we currently, maybe last few days, but how are we currently feeling about things? Yeah, it's so true, and so and all of that is shaped by our expectations um, because if we expect things to be a certain way and they never are, you know, they're, they're rare. I mean, you know um, I mean, I teach law of attraction, so I also have to be careful to, un to say that, you know, it's like you get what you expect, but also it's like, it's our expectations also that can set us up for, um, disappointment. So you have to be very flexible and present in what, you know, what am I experiencing? I always, I remember this meditation I used to do and, and it was a kind of semi-guided meditation where there were long periods of silence, but there was a little bit of dialogue along the way. And, and I just remember he would say, you know, don't expect to feel, uh, the same way, as you felt, you know, some other time and compare this meditation, you know, to another time, you know, you can't get 
the same experience to come back. So just allow it to unfold the way. And so like what you're saying reminds me so much of that. And, you know, when we do yoga or workout or we do anything, you know, you have to do it in the spirit of like, I'm, you know, I'm going to do my best and, and my best is going to be completely different from any other day because there's all these filters and ingredients that go into what's best right in this present moment. Yeah. And ingredients, there's so many, and that's really, life is so uh, uh, fertile and full of uh, diversity and, and, uh, and that's, you know, it's part of the magic. Um, you know, that's, uh, it's a trap that almost everyone falls into any beginning meditator happened to me as well as when you first have that experience of bliss and calm mind. And, and the next time you sit down, you, you seek that somehow an expectation deep down, you can try as you might, you're just not going to be able to avoid it, <laughs> that you have that <laughs> expectation somewhere that you're going to reach that state again. And that is actually what blocks you then. It blocked me for almost a year. I, I couldn't get back into the practice. And so it, I think it happens to everyone. And then you realize, oh, it's the it's the waking up and seeing, well, today my mind is crazy monkey mind and it's all over the place and being okay with that. And the, the that actually calms it down again. But it's ultimately seeing things as they are that, that we're trying to... Uh, uh, stay in as opposed to controlling our state and, and just always being happy and blissful. And we do calm down as a consequence of the practice, but uh, it, it shouldn't be the goal. Then we're just living for an outcome again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We got to let go of you just, you know, cause if you're looking for this, then you're not going to actually be present to what what actually is in front of you. Yeah. And, and we, you know, when it comes to people and relationships, that's a really important one right there where, um, we are 50% of the dynamic of that relationship. So if there's tension with somebody or friction in the family or a coworker or what, whatnot, recognizing that our reactivity to them when they say certain things or, uh, uh, we respond a certain way that's keeping that dynamic in place. And so, um, are wanting others to be different is the, the main source of our friction, right? <laughs> Us wanting life to be different, everything to be different. You know, we want it to be according to what we made up ahead of time, ahead of life actually happening. And so it's just a, a, a you can't win in that situation. So no. coming out of that dynamic altogether is, is a, a, it's a new life that really that happens once we get there. Absolutely. Yeah. My husband and I have had numerous conversations about that where <laughs> you know it's like I didn't answer according to the you know the story he made up in his mind how I'm supposed to answer this question and it's like you know the only reason you're getting upset right now is because you had an idea of how the, I was going to answer this question and I didn't answer that exact way so <laughs> <laughs> exactly and, that and it, and it goes both ways it, Except for most of the time, he does answer the way I expect. So <laughs> <laughs> you've trained him well. <laughs> so, um, wow. So, I mean, there's just so many different, um, you know, uh, benefits to just, um, you know, taking this on and, and, you know, like really tuning into the, the you that you're supposed you were always meant to be. So um, tell us, how can we get there? How can we learn more of, you know, about your trainings and, um, you know, the, the things that you are offering to help people to just be you and, mm -hmm. um, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, obviously you can, uh, you can get the book. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the stores. Audible, I narrated, self-narrated the book as well. And um, it's really, I wrote the book from a perspective of uh, what I was seeking, you know, what I needed when I was at that point in that station. And that was really um, a, a book that is simple in its language. Um, when I was starting out and uh, I, I just, you know, a lot of it was woo-woo to me and I, and I wanted the wisdom, but the words were getting in the way. So I wrote the book from a uh, with the most simple pedestrian language possible. So there's as few triggers that could turn anyone off as possible. Um, and then also uh, there's 50 chapters, about three or four pages long each. So you don't have to actually read the whole book. I spent hours 
you know, reading an entire book or watching an hour long video just to find the little segment that I was dealing with <laughs> and, and that had a little advice in it. So even there in terms of accessibility and, and discovering just the piece that you need to know right now, um, you can, you can jump between chapters. You don't even have to read it front to end. Um, and then um, the, the, the rational intellectual understanding of being in reactivity and, and the benefits of really responding to the present moment as opposed to being lost in thought. That's all great, um, but we do need a practice. We need to train our awareness muscles. So for that, I offer uh, online coaching, in-person um, coaching. I do BU retreats um, internationally and, and here in Bali as well. And uh, you do really need to kind of kickstart uh, or at least once or twice a year refresh uh, one's mindfulness practice. I go on retreats as well, uh, just to to give oneself that space to to rediscover a lot of things. It is a busy life. No matter how calm, no matter how mindful you are, you that you need reminders. So um, you know the retreats are a good way of doing that. And I offer weekly free meditations that anyone could join uh, online. So uh, there's a couple different ways, and I'm also working on uh, uh, some other projects that uh, will be announced soon that are pretty exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Well, um, I, yeah, I totally agree that everyone needs to, you know, whatever you want to call it, a reset, a reboot, you know, just to kind of like, you know, get your, you know, just bring yourself back to the, the moment and your purpose and remember who you are and why you're here and what you're doing. And, you know, so, and then just, you know, getting to just spend a week or whatever, you know, out by your pool, I think that would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great and for it's people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's important to remember that finding yourself doesn't necessarily mean you have to completely uh, usurp everything that you're doing. It's, it has to do with doing the things that you're already doing more mindfully um, as I started talking about earlier, um, I, I was doing things that I loved. I was doing my passions and still I was missing the point because in those passions, I was still pursuing an outcome. I was still waiting for the, the day when it all comes together to finally be happy. And so that it's not really about that. We can uh, live a deeper, a more uh, meaningful experience in anything that we do. Obviously, if you hate your job, then you should change. But uh, for for most of us, we're you know we're partners, we're parents, we're coworkers, we're leaders in our community or, or participants in a club, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and so, bringing a more mindful self to those situations—that's what it's really all about. I totally, yes, I totally agree with you. You know, it's it's just about being inspired in that moment and, you know, being open to receive whatever, um, you know, gifts are in this moment and, you know, not with, you know, some like I'm doing this so that I can get this, you know, result exactly. kind of thing, exactly. you know, that force, mm -hmm. forcing yourself to, to do things that you don't really want to do because you think that there's going to be some big payoff in the end. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the yeah, payoff is this, it can be right here. It could just be yeah. right in this moment. And that's really it. The, the, the payoff happens instantly when we, when we respond to our inner voice and, and our truth, and we, we abide by that, we get rewarded instantly. We, we have that path of least resistance. We can take clear actions, which lead to good decisions and uh, bear fruit, um, that is, you know, as, as, as fruitful and, and positive as possible. And when we go against that inner voice, we kind of get punished right away. We don't feel good. We, we feel like we made a mistake. We did something wrong. We, we linger on that. We keep doubting that decision and naturally so, because we went against our, our own truth. So the life really rewards us instantly and it kind of punishes us instantly as well. So, uh, we really don't have a choice. We do have a choice, but ultimately not being you isn't really a choice because it's just, it's, it's not, uh, a, the, the best way to live to say it lightly. Um, so ultimately we, we only have, um, uh, our own self as, as our ultimate purpose of, of, of living. And it's really a responsibility to life. The more you get into it and the more 
uh, thoughtful and present we get, at least I found is like, it, it's a responsibility to honor life, honor this inner design that, that that's there. And, and this is really how we give back. This is how we show our uh, appreciation to the whatever incredible energy, intelligence, whatever you want to call it, is behind all of this. That's given us this opportunity to to experience the the senses and ourselves and the physical dimension, and um, that's how we give back by by being you. We give back by being you. I think that's a great note to go out on. And um, thank you so much for all your insight and wisdom that you shared with us today. Um, I just want to encourage our listeners once again to uh, go check out his book on Amazon. Be, uh, be you. Are you ready to be you or be you? It's be you. Uh, be you. Yes. <laughs> be you. <laughs> that was the title of our podcast. Are you ready to be you? And um, and then you're also offering a couple, you have a couple offers on your uh, website for us, um, sirak.com forward slash promo forward slash ebook and then sirak.com forward slash promo forward slash meditation where they can uh, download a guided meditation um, mm-hmm. that will help them to get in touch with their their inner self uh, yeah absolutely so you can get get the the free ebook as a download and then also the meditation um that we just need tools in our toolbox um it's not about telling anybody how how to live even at my retreats it's more creating a nurturing safe environment to find yourself in your own truth because ultimately that's that's the only thing that's true for each and every person is within the framework of your own body within the framework of your own experiences that's what's true for you wonderful wonderful well thank you so much for being a guest on the power of your mind podcast Um, it's been a pleasure and thank you victoria it was fantastic i I want to do it again i want to keep going Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. And thank you guys for listening. We will see you next week.